this is Tish Griffin back with you to talk to you about your finances, any questions that you may have. And I'm here on behalf of Family Credit Management Services. I want you to know that Family Credit is a trusted resource in the area, so feel free to go to the website, visit familycredit.org, or if you've got questions, you can call and talk to a certified counselor directly. You can talk to a debt management professional and get your questions answered right then and there. You can reach out to a counselor at 800-994-3328. So I wanted to talk to you, I know the season's changing and there's a couple of things that I want you to be aware of. Now, typically tax time, we file in April, but if you have applied for a tax exemption or extension, that date is coming due soon and so you wanna make sure that you've got your tax returns in by October 15th. If you have filed an extension, that's right. Make sure you reach out, get those um, 1040 submitted, and that way you have no worries. Now, when you submit your tax return, I want you to make sure the thing that the IRS looks for is that the date that it has been submitted or postmarked on. So you can do it on the 15th and get it to them. But you wanna make sure that it's postmarked by that date if you have filed an extension. If you have not filed an extension, then keep in mind that you may face other tax uh, fees or interest once the IRS goes through, they look at your return and see what you actually owe. So we wanna make sure that we're taking some time going over everything and getting that together. And um, as we go on with the show today, we want, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things that people are speaking on and having issues with and problems on. Now, one of the things that I've had people ask me about is student loans. A lot of people are struggling with their student loan debt. And with us just going back to school, kids are back in school now, and a lot of people didn't realize that maybe I should have submitted a FAFSA. And if you are looking at going to school or furthering your education, the federal aid program is there for you to submit for your student loans and see if you can get some help because guess paying for an education costs. No matter where you go, there's a charge for it. So what a lot of people do, instead of going to a four, uh, four year university, they may say, let me cut down on that expense a little bit because four year universities sometimes can run $60,000 or more per year. So keep that in mind. A lot of us don't have that type of money laying around. So you wanna make sure that you're looking at your budget and also thinking about this too. If you're going to a university or you're going to try and get your degree, whatever your degree may be in, and you wanna think about it. If I spend all this time in school, let's say, my debt comes to about, if I spend $60,000 at a four-year university, by the time it's all said and done, I will owe over $200,000 for my education. And that's within the last four years. So you wanna say to yourself, with the profession that I am going into, with whatever my field of choice is, how much money am I really gonna make you wanna take some time, do a little research, look on Glassdoor, um, you can look at Indeed, and see how much is it estimated that people in my career of choice actually make. And you may say, why are you thinking about even looking at that? But you wanna know, because you need to know what your budget is going to look like in the future. The last thing you wanna do is have $200,000, $300,000 worth of student loans, and you're only gonna make $30,000 per year gonna take a little bit, well, a lot of bit of time for you to actually break even on the amount of time that you're putting into schooling, the cost that you're putting into it, and to be able to repay that debt. Now, for some professions, there are um, different companies out there that may say, hey, if you go ahead, you complete your education, you've got this degree, then we will pay a percentage or even pay off some of those student loans, and some places will even pay them all off after whatever their stipulations may be. They may say you need to work for them six months or a year or even longer, 
but they'll give you a discount or help pay back your student loans. Those are things that you can look for when you're thinking about the job or your career of choice as well. For a lot of people, the alternatives out there are to look at a community college. For your universities, they are quite expensive. Graduate school is very expensive. But sometimes in the profession or the line of work that you're interested in going in, there may, a, there may be a degree certification program for that same field. That way you're able to get in sooner, you can get the training that you need. Sometimes there's even possible internships or apprenticeships that come along with that career choice or that career path and your certification program. So that might be a great option for you. And another option is that some people might say, instead of me doing this whole four years here, spending that $200,000, $300,000 on education, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to community college for a while, where instead of me paying thousands and thousands of dollars, I may pay a few hundred dollars for my general education, for my required courses, and build up and work on my transcript, see what courses are needed for me to qualify that, for that degree and go that route. That may look better or work better for your budget. Then you may say, I'll do this for two to three years and then when I'm ready to complete that course then now, for, or that course work so that I can have my actual degree, now I've only gotta pay $60,000 as, com as compared to paying the whole $240,000 for the four year plan. So again, our goal here is yes, you're gonna achieve the same level of success, you're gonna achieve that same degree, but let's look at what your budget's gonna look at like, what that money is gonna cost you to get there and come up with the best option for that. Sometimes you can talk to some guidance counselors at your college that you're interested in, at the different university levels that you're interested in. You can talk to a guidance counselor, you can talk to um, a student loan counselor as well. And you make the best choice for your life, whatever direction that is gonna go in. I just don't want you out there thinking, man, I've got all this student loan debt and I didn't really even think about that. Then we have those people out there that are lifelong students too because guess what? As long as, as you're in school and you're taking classes and you're applying for loans, those loans don't go into repayment until after you graduate or until after you complete the program. So for some people, they actually say, well, I'll continue to pile on the debt. I'll pile it on so that I never have to pay it back. But keep in mind that when you're doing that, what's going to happen is that that debt's going to get more and more and more. And you may say, well, I'll go for this degree and that degree just so I can stay in school so that I don't have to work on those payments. And a lot of times that can be overwhelming. Sometimes we even forget the loans that we have. And as a college student, when you're in there, sometimes you may need help trying to get those student loans too. So you complete your FAFSA and submit your information. And now guess what? They'll give you a certain amount or let's say you are applying for that $60,000 and they'll say, yes, we've got you. We know you need $60,000 worth of student loans. We are going to give you $20,000. We need you to pay the other 40. And you're sitting there struggling saying, how can I do this? They say, well, if you submit your parents' information, then we can go ahead and give you the rest of the money. Meaning your parents will have to take out a student loan to help you get your education. And a lot of times this is seen as a viable solution for some people and the parents will take out that loan and it's called a parent plus loan. With that being said, the parent then becomes responsible for that portion of your student loan repayment. Now, as a student, you do not have to make a payment until six months after you graduate or complete the program, or if you leave school. Now, you've got six months after you've left school before those payments will start again. With a Parent PLUS loan, parents aren't that lucky. They want you to start paying as soon as possible. With a student that comes out of school, yes, a lot of times there's payment arrangements that you can um, receive. There are um, different options for forbearance and uh, repayment plans that are out there as well. With the forbearance, or if you're looking at student loan repayment plans, they will give you those options. But a Parent PLUS loan, 
for parents, they do not have that option. And when you're thinking about your um, student loans and you know that you can't pay them, sometimes there are options where you can say, I'm gonna, I need some time. You contact the student loan servicer, you're out of school for six months and your, your payments, your repayment is scheduled to start. So you need to contact that lender and say, hey, I know I'm supposed to pay this, but I can't right now. What can you do for me? And they will set you up either on a plan where say you don't have to make any payments right now. Um, we've got this, we're gonna freeze your payments, we're gonna freeze your interest, and you got this amount of months. They could give you five months, they can give you six months, they can give you 24 months before you even have to make a payment. And they can also say, yes, we're gonna freeze your payments, but guess what? Unfortunately, we can't stop that interest from being charged. So you're not required to make a payment, but they're still charging you interest, which means guess what? Your balance is going to be going up each and every single month once it's time for you to start your repayment because even though you're not making payments, your payments are zero, but you're getting what? Interest each and every single month. And that can add up quickly. You may think, okay, no big deal. But if at any point you can make a payment towards it, it's in your best interest because that's gonna cut down on your balances. I know your budget may have a lot for you to focus on, so that's why you do wanna call the servicer and see what options are available for you. Now, if you're looking at student loan repayment options, there are some really great um, student loan repayment plans or income-based repayment plans for you to enroll in. And with the income-based repayment plans, they take a look at what your income is right now. There are some that will look at your income as you continue with this, because if you get on an income-based repayment plan, you will need to recertify every so often. And most of the times, it's an annual recertification, meaning that if your income changes, next time they're gonna check it because they're gonna ask you for your pay stub. They're gonna ask you for your possible tax returns. They wanna see the amount that you're bringing in. Now, your student loan repayment plans typically are based on what's called your discretionary income, meaning that after you pay your bills, how much do you have left over in the course of the month that can go towards your student loans? Keep in mind that when you get out of school and you're setting up to repay your debts, the way that the payments are made is that whatever that student loan payment is, they wanna see you be able to pay this debt off within 10 years. So with $100,000 in student loans, sometimes they may want you to pay payments as high as a thousand dollars per month or even more depending on what the interest rate is when you received your loan so that's why it's very important that you're thinking about your budget because whether or not you make good money or not a lot of us don't want to put a thousand dollars towards our student loan payments if we don't have to now if you can that's great but if we don't have to a lot of times we may say we want that money to go towards something else. So we wanna be sure that we're looking at our budget and we're seeing how much can you actually afford in the course of the month. So what's your discretionary income after you pay your bills, after you pay whatever's listed on your credit report, what is left in your paycheck that can go towards those student loans. And the income-based repayment plan will be set on that level. For some repayment options, they may say, hmm, we're gonna get you this low payment and for some people, the payment is as low as zero. You can pay what you want on it, but as you recertify, you'll see that if your income changes, your payment may go up. But for a lot of people, there is no money left over, especially right out of college, haven't received a job yet. So they are understanding of that. You can have an income-based repayment plan at zero. The goal of the uh, income-based repayment plan options is to get you paid off out of student loan debt within 20 to 25 years, depending on which option you choose. One of the great caveats about it is that they'll, let's say they give you a payment of zero and you're paying that for five years. Next five years, you know, your payment may be like 20 to $30 and you're keeping that going. But by the time you get to year 10, we still have a nice little chunk of change to pay. So again, income based for payment plans, they're structured for you to pay off within 20 to 25 years. And some may have a time that is shorter than that. And once you're making your payments, you've gotta be making these payments of whatever the required amount is each and every single month. At the end of the time period, if there is a balance left, what will happen is that that student loan balance is forgiven. 
Meaning it's like it's gone, it's wiped away. You don't owe the rest of whatever that payment plan is supposed to be. And that's really the best option out there. You've got those, you've got that arrangement set up and you're getting older and you're still paying your payments on your student loans, but you realize, guess what? In the next few years, I don't even have to make that payment anymore. I don't have to worry about it because even though I've got $200,000 in student loans, I may have paid up to 20,000, the rest of that is gonna go away if I consistently am able to make my payments each and every single month for however long that time period is. So it's really worth it to see what you qualify for. Now, Again, everyone's situation is unique to them. Your payment may be $0, it may be 10, it may be 25, it may be 100 and 150, could be more than that. But whatever that payment is, make it, make it consistently. Use it, put it as part of your regular budget, whatever that payment is. And I've noticed that a lot of people forget to make payment arrangements or include that in their spending plan or budget when they set these debts up. So I want you to caution that, think about that, make sure that you are taking um, control of the situation ahead of time. Now you may say, I don't even remember what student loans I signed up for. I don't remember who I owe. Um, I don't remember the last time I talked to anyone. Things may be showing as negative or um, bad on my credit report. How do I figure this out? What I want you to do is you can go to the De U.S. Department of Education. Go to their website, and you can go to their website as U. I'm sorry, as ed.gov. It's just that simple. www.ed.gov, and you will get a report. You can sign up to get a report, which is just like a credit report. Remember, we've got access. We've got access to all of this information, but a lot of times we don't use it. So if you've got questions about that, you can reach out to a counselor at familycredit.org or at 800-994-3328 to help you get these copies of your credit report, your educational department report, and even your check systems report. Get that information and figure out your finances and get back on track. So we're talking about this report that we can get from the U.S. Department of Education, which will list every student loan you have ever had, no matter when you got it, they're keeping track of it. So you wanna keep that in mind, they know it. You may not know it, but they've got this list. And it may be a long list. It'll show you when you open that student loan. It'll show you the amount you took that loan out for, the amount of interest that you agreed to pay, and if there's still a balance on it. If that loan changed lenders, it will tell you that, or servicers, it will tell you that as well. So you've got this long printout of all these student loans, which will give you a total. You can take that and compare it to the debts that are on your credit report just for you to figure out what, um, how much you actually have in student loans. And sometimes some of these debts could be so old, we may have even forgotten about it, but that balance is still on that report, so you'll be able to see that. Now, for some people, with having all these different loans everywhere, you may have one through Sally Mae, you may have Nailnet, you may have Great Lakes, whatever that student loan servicer is. And sometimes it's hard to keep track of. So what we can do at that point, we want to go, same people that do the FAFSA, we wanna to go to financialaid.gov or FAFSA, and we want to see if we can do what's called consolidate. We're gonna take all of these loans that are all over, we wanna put them into one place, be able to make one low payment and get everything consolidated. Now, a lot of times I want you to know that to consolidate student loans is a lot easier than trying to consolidate your debt, so your credit card companies or anything like that. But if you go and you sit down and you look at debt consolidation for your student loans, make sure that you're doing it through whatever that government entity that is handling your student loans or your servicers. Caution you because there are some places out there they may say, oh, we do student loan consolidation, and they have nothing to do with student loan consolidation. So you wanna make sure that the place that you're using is reputable and it's your actual student loan servicer, and they may take that loan, you may put in for consolidation, you're gonna do that right on that website with FAFSA, where are you submitting that? And once you do that, they will come back and tell you, we consolidated these loans for you. Give us a few days, we'll send you out the new paperwork. This is who your new servicer is, or you're with the same servicer. Here's your new balance. Instead of you having 12 different loans all over, we put it in one. So now you've got that balance, and here's your monthly payment. 
And once you have that monthly payment, now we can see where repayment options are available. Should you get um, a forbearance? Should you put your loans on the student loan income-based repayment plan? Whatever options are available to you, now we can see that. Now, then we can move from there. Also, here's a tip, sometimes, sometimes not all, but depending on some type of these types of loans, sometimes they will let a parent consolidate those loans into another loan. So you can take those Parent PLUS loans and consolidate them into that payment as well. And then we can look at the income-based repayment plans or those options that are available. See, little secret some people don't even know. So when they're telling you that you can't do that, just ask. Like I said, you never know what's out there until you ask. If you've got questions about dealing with that and setting up your budget, knowing what your discretionary income is, figuring out how much you actually have left, reach out to a counselor at familycredit.org or go um, give them a call at 800-994-3328. If you need help setting up that budget, download the My Spending Plan or Personal Finance Made Easy just to get things going for you and that way you are able to figure it out. For some people, not everyone, but for some people, student loans have become like a thorn in their side and sometimes they say, well, I haven't talked to my student loan servicer, I don't know who's handling it, and everything's gone bad. You know you may have been getting some collection calls about your student loans. Just like a regular creditor with the student loans, if you are not staying in contact, if you're not trying to set up arrangements, and if you're not making the monthly payments, just like the regular accounts, these accounts can charge off as well. And when a student loan charges off, man, it looks so bad on your report. It really does impact your score negatively. The crazy part is that with the statute of limitations on a collection agency or collection debt, we know that it's seven years from the date of last payment where it probably won't affect us um, as far as like with our credit score, with repayment, anything like that. Sometimes it may seem that those debts just go away. Not the case with student loans. If you're dealing with student loans and your debts go delinquent and they charge off, it can still come back to haunt you. I've had some cases where people will try and get a home loan and thinking that, hey, my student loans aren't showing up on my credit report anymore. I know I haven't paid them, but guess what? There's deeper checks that lenders use and they go in and just apply to get a home. You may have gotten approved right away. You get your pre-approval, pre-qualification and you're shopping, you get the contract and find out weeks later, guess what? You still owe $30,000 in student loans. Oh, that student loan from 20 years ago, it still popped up because guess what? It's not something that you can forget about because student loans for the most part are tied into or are serviced by their government debt. You owe the government. So it doesn't just go away no matter how much we think it is. And for some people you find out the hard way too because you're thinking tax season, we talked about taxes. I expect a tax refund. I'm very happy about this tax refund, but guess what? Your student loans are so far past due that any type of refund or relief that you thought you were going to get is now snatched up. And that refund is gone to repay your student loans. And every single year after that, every time you apply for, or uh, you think you're getting a refund, student loans will grab it again because you have not done anything to show them that they will receive payment for that debt. There are a couple of different options. Um, there is student loan remediation and there's student loan counseling that will help you in that process. So if you've got questions, you can reach out to your student loan servicer and see what options are available. Even if you haven't paid your student loans in years, even if you don't know the status, yes, there are options for you to get set back up on a plan. They'll pull that account out of collections and say, hey, We'll make you a deal. You make about nine payments to us, then yeah, we'll set you back up. We'll get the payments going on your credit report again, but you need to prove to us that this is something that you want. This is something that you can do. So reach out to your student loan servicers and let's get that going because yes, it can have a very positive effect on your credit. Even if you were showing delinquent in the past, now they can bring those accounts back current and you can have your new servicer set up. You can have that repayment plan set up and it's going to positively affect your credit. So don't think that you can just get rid of your student loan debts 
and we've talked about a lot of this information, there's help available, there's resources that are out there. If you reach out to a counselor at familycredit.org and get some help with your budgeting, with student loans, dealing with collection agencies, dealing with your credit card companies, and reestablishing repayment terms and plans, there's that help that's out there. Go to familycredit.org or call a counselor. You can talk with someone right now at 800-994-3328. Or when you're visiting that website, chat feature, you can chat with a counselor. You don't even have to pick up the phone. You can do an online chat, get the help that you need. Use us as a resource. Again, 800-994-3328 or familycredit.org. I hope this information was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.